I was just in the house cooking squash fritters because I do try to cook relatively healthy food, but sometimes my inner southern chef comes clawing out demanding something fried. But Sweet Maya just called me, told me to come outside. So that's what we're doing. This is exciting. Ladies, go back to your house. Shoo shoo. Go home. Go home. Go home. Shoo shoo. Shoo shoo. That's a new Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, I'm going to go change. Elvis, say hi to our friends. Hello. <laughs> friends, this is Elvis, yeah. and he has brought yeah. our bees. I actually did not mean to do this, but I'm wearing a t-shirt from Brothers Honey, which belongs to Elvis and Katie. Um, and we talked about this in a live stream recently, but if y'all remember, I went and photographed a birth a few months ago. Um, it was Elvis and Katie's baby that was born. They're good friends of ours, and... Elvis just brought our bees. Are you taking this in to? To be harvested. To be harvested? Uh-huh. There's gonna be some bees on it, but. Oh, cool. And so you just take that into the store and use y'all's kitchen there? Yes. How much honey is that? So, a box of medium like this, it would be about 60 pounds. Wow. Yeah, depends on how, um, how heavy the frames are, and you'll see. I'm trying to find them. But sometimes they um, they cap it, and then they go back and they double off on it, so the frames become really, really heavy. So what happened in here? They capped it, but then they put brood inside of this in the middle of it, and then they went back and double cap it. That's why it's like drawn up so mm -hmm. far, and then. Uh, I just wanted to go ahead and harvest what I have on this frame and then I'll clean this uh, with a knife mm -hmm. to reshape the comb. Most of them will look something like this. Yeah. When you see this uh, layer of thin wax on it, that means uh, that that frame is capped, is ready for harvest, you know. Wow. So sometimes you find them like completely all the way, mm -hmm. every single cell is. Yep, so that's a really cool show frame if you want to take it and enter it into a show. That's really neat. By the kitchen, drop everything else. So I'm like, well, I guess I'll just carry them all the way to just. <laughs> so that pollen will be like different colors, depends on like the pollen sources that they find. They'll take it and they'll mix it in with honey mm -hmm. and they create what they call, what you call like a bee, a bee bread and they'll feed that to their babies. I love the way they sound. Okay, just be calm. They're not gonna hurt you. What do y'all think? Good. It's noisy. Good. Toby seems a little nervous. <laughs> it's a weird sound, huh? Especially when they fly by your ear. Look at sweet Maya. Wanna taste it? Yes. Back up there, not you. <laughs> you mean bear? You gonna stick your finger in there? Right there in the honey. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Action. Mmm. <laughs> yummy. It's <laughs> really good. What do you oh, think? Yummy. yummy. I want to taste it. That's literally the Give best thing I've ever had. <laughs> what I have been in Brothers Honey while there was honey extraction going on before. Please don't get away. I want the other one. <laughs> See what I did there? Mm, yeah. Isn't that so good? Yeah, so I don't know what that taste is coming from, but uh, it's wonderful. Like it. Hey Elvis, how many hives did you start with? We started with three and a half. Three and a half hives. How many hives do you have now? <laughs> Just to clarify, how many hives? There are about 38. 38 hives. <laughs> yeah. I'm scared of the bees, but I'm really excited to go with the wax. The wax and the honey, honey yeah. yeah. Honey tastes we have so good. It even <laughs> tastes Mommy, better. I want my bees to hide. Oh, uh, this. Do I need the hood up and all that? Bees? Uh, yeah, I mean, normally you would yeah. think. So, this was the leftover from where he cut the cappings. Oh and he just gave it to the kids. So, we're going to take it in the house and strain it. I'm so excited. Mm. Okay, we can't go all poo bear on this. We got to. Can you make biscuits? Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> wait, can we put this in our tea? Yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> sure. We eat it all the time. Uh, I'm not sure if I it with dead bugs <laughs> on it. 
It's disgusting. It also, and honey, the bees made it. We have one of the episodes on we bear bears. Are you excited? The bears get obsessed with oh, Benjamin is kind of concerned about. You're wanting more honey? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's plenty of honey inside because Mr. Elvis shared with us. So we'll have it in the morning with breakfast. Including the wax? Yeah. Oh, this one. <laughs> oh, yep. Oh, how cool. You can pick it. Can I try the honey? Pick what? Then, what are those? It's a tomato. It's ripe. Go for it, girlfriend. Eat it. Is it good or did it split? I think it split. Oh man. Well, we can give it to the chickens. They'll poop the seeds and plant more tomatoes for us. I'm eating half of it. Uh, <laughs> mm. oh, check is, that out. My painted ladies over here are starting to turn. They're not ready yet. Daddy, can I see? But they will be soon. Cool. Wait. He said it's not good for the kids to play right in front of the beehives. This is not going to be a play area. Okay. They won't bother you. As long as you're not like messing right in front of their landing strips, you know? Right. Hook on it, but I can put it in here. Oh, okay. That's a lot of bees. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're talking about right there. Yeah. So there's larvae in different stages in there. Yeah. As you're going down in here, I don't know if you can see it, but you can zoom in and you'll see some eggs. They're just little bit of specks. Yeah, I do see what you're talking about. I mean, the camera can't, but. I understand, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. What they've already sealed up has already been. This is just honey right here, and they just capped it. Okay. I'm gonna show you what brood looks like. Okay. So, uh, those are, they've already like had a generation in there, you know, and they all popped out, but I'm gonna see on. So this right here, you see like different larva right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And then all of this is capped brood. Okay. Okay. A lot of people are like worried about trying to find the queen. As long as you see different stages of the larva and eggs, you she's know the queen, she's in there. Yeah. Yeah. And more than likely, this queen has not been marked. Most of them, you know, <laughs> just because like. I just went inside and lost all the kids to the tub of honey. I hope they eat their dinner. <laughs> Do you need help? Yeah, I'm trying to hold my camera. So Elvis was explaining to us that there are very different and very strong opinions within the beekeeping world about feeding bees and he was explaining the different pros and cons and the different opinions that people have. Uh, we're just putting these tabs in and we are feeding them as they get established. We'll be adding more boxes tomorrow, but um, as of right now, we are putting some sugar water and a feeder on top of these hives. I'm yeah. just trying to get an idea of right. how much I mean, it's going to take to I fill up the whole thing. Yeah, a five gallon bucket would fill both of this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Another good thing you could do, you can add essential oils to okay. this. Lemon, is it lemongrass? Is that lemongrass, it's a good one, but sometimes it encourages uh, robbing. Okay. Because that's what they're looking for. Uh, I mean, that's kind of like a catcher when you're mm -hmm. looking for like swarm, you like putting you your swarm traps and stuff. So you can put like spearmint. Okay, spearmint. Spearmint, it's a good one. Okay. And there's a few others. You can put lavender. Okay. You know. And where do you um, put that? You just, you, you, put just put, you just put a couple of drops okay. in the bucket where you're making your, your syrup. Okay, cool. You know, but I mean, you literally just need a couple of drops. They communicate through smells mainly. So if they taste something that they like, they're going to go back into the hive. They're going to regurgitate it, spit it into the other's mouth and be like, hey, go get me some of this. <laughs> this is really good stuff. <laughs> So, yeah. I'm so glad that I'm not a bee. <laughs> you try this? Isn't that amazing? Wow. Come on, bear. In the middle. Hey, no throwing fits. We'll show you the queen whenever you can come back out here in your bee suit. They're very calm right now, he said, but I don't really want you hanging out right by the hat without your protection on, okay? Did y'all put a necklace on, bear? Not <laughs> <laughs> I just want to sit here and stare at these boxes 
and watch them come and go. Obviously they're settling in for the night and there's really not much to see and I really need to cook dinner. And I'm just sitting there watching them. Jeremiah said they're like little kingdoms as Elvis was telling him all about the queen and her guards and all of the different things. I'm really, really excited to come down here in the morning and see how they're going through the garden. Really excited. So check out these Redmond yeah, those Super Cactus Zinnias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't they amazing? <laughs> so big. The other day I was talking about children having inclinations and how we like to nurture those things and give room and space for, for those to grow. And it's funny, you know, it's like easy to have this conversation about kids, but grown-ups have inclinations too. And it's really cool to me to see how the way Jeremiah's mind works. Like Elvis is telling him all about the bees and he's just completely absorbing it. And I think it's wonderful too. Um, but there are certain things that I am passionate about that Maya is not so passionate about, like the garden. He loves me, so he'll build a beautiful garden and make it a wonderful space. And he'll help me in it when I need help. And you know, he picks things up. He listens to the things that I'm sharing, but he doesn't, um, you know, he's not passionate about it the way that I am. This makes me feel so alive. I love it. Listening to him learn about the bees and seeing this passion spark and just seeing the wheels turning in his mind and the fact that this just really excites him. Like, I, I felt like this was probably going to be, you know, more heavy handed Jeremiah's thing, but I was prepared to learn about it and I still am. But it doesn't spark the passion in me that the garden does. I see the inclination, it's pretty cool. So with that said, for the purpose of discussion, I'm curious what your inclination is. I guess it would be easy for me to assume that it's gardening because you're here on my channel um, and that is my passion and so that's the viewpoint that you see most of the time from me. But what are you passionate about? For me, it's definitely the garden. Um, and I love the animals. I love the I love the company of animals, if that if that makes sense. Like I haven't gotten really into training the horses. Jeremiah's really good at that because he's just he's got a really good personality for it. I have a hard time being bold enough. I love to ride the horses, but as far as training goes, that's really more his passion. But I, you know, for me, it's the garden. What is it for you? I'd love to know. What makes you come alive? Guys, look at this borage. Is this wild? Like this thing has gone nuts. And it's just laid over everywhere. So full. I saw where someone had made um, like ice cubes with borage flowers in them. And I was thinking that might be a cute thing to do for summer beverages. And these little volunteer zinnias are just taking off. In Two days ago, I made a video where these sunflowers just right at the same height as my head. And look now, is that nuts? Look at this, there's a little head is forming in there. We'll have a flower before too long. I guess it was pests. Uh, you know, I kept having to re-sow the things on my trellises, but last year the garden was all full at the same time. The trellises were covered, the sunflowers were blooming. I don't know if I'm going to get that this year. Uh, I don't know, it's just different. It's different every year. Isn't that a crazy thing? It's just so different every year. And also I'm wondering, are you going to get tired of seeing my green tomatoes every single vlog until they're ripe? Because I seriously just want to show them to you every single time. Every single time. They're so good. This is, this is the doctor um, right here. And these are just looking really good. I, I'm assuming those are gonna be my first ripe ones, but watch another one just pop off ripe and completely surprise me. So it may be overkill to show you my unripe tomatoes every single day, but I do promise that since I have allowed you to anticipate the ripening with me, I will share it with you whenever I get to pick them and I make my first tomato sandwich of the year. I will share that with you. These Paul Robesons are pretty loaded. Bear got stung on the nose by a bee. He had to learn to leave it alone because he wasn't listening. Oh look, this black beauty is starting to get some color. 
color on her shoulders. Isn't that pretty? Okay guys, as much as I would like to just walk around the garden taking gratuitous shots of unripe tomatoes, I do have to go cook dinner, which I'm making squash fritters. It's gonna be worth it. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you, until next time.